Hi, welcome to Amazing Grace. So glad you're here. Thanks for joining us today. With the events surrounding the pandemic and the ramification of dealing with this pandemic on a daily basis, many people have wondered if we are in the times predicted in the Bible, the time just before the return of Jesus. According to a LifeWay research article dated April 7th, 2020, a vast majority of pastors see signs of end times in current events. Almost 9 in 10 pastors see at least some current events matching those Jesus said would occur shortly before he returns to earth. The conclusion of this article states that the current global pandemic will create interest among churchgoers and non-religious people about what the Bible says about plagues, disasters, and the end times. The urgency pastors feel is less about stockpiling and more about helping people be ready for Christ's return. This is our topic today, is the return of Jesus, also called the rapture. Our passage that we're going to focus on today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Before we read that, let's invite the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come and teach us his word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day, and we thank you for the ministry of your word. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to come now, and we ask that you would, you would clarify your word in our soul, in our hearts, in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that we would be ready for the return of Jesus and that we would, we would help other people know that Jesus is coming soon. And Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the promise of your return. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Let's read that. It says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Friends, the word encourage each other is here. You see, the rapture is an exciting time. Now, when I grew up in a mainline church, I never heard about uh, the return of Christ until later on. The pastor uh, didn't preach on it, but the, he showed a movie. It was called The Thief in the Night, and I don't know if you remember that film. It was kind of cheesy, but it really stopped and made you thought, think about what, what is going to happen with the return of Jesus. There are many churches, there are many pastors that never talk about the return of Christ. Many Christians aren't even aware of this passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Friends, the, the idea that Christ is coming back seems so distant to so many people. I believe that we need to get ready for the return of Jesus. Biblical prophecy provides some of the greatest encouragement and hope available to us. Just as the Old Testament is saturated with the prophecies concerning Christ's first return, first coming, so both Testaments are filled with references to the second coming of Jesus. One scholar has estimated, listen to this, one scholar has estimated that there are 1,845 references to Christ's second coming in the Old Testament. 17 books give it prominence. In the 260 chapters of the New Testament, there are 318 references to the second coming of Jesus. I'm amazed about this. One out of every 30 verses, that means, 23 out of 27 New Testament books after, refer to this great event. For every prophecy in the Bible concerning Jesus' first advent, there are eight which look forward to his second coming. Friends, we are overwhelmed with evidence that Jesus is returning. And I believe that the, pand the pandemic that we're going through, uh, the Bible calls that a birth pain. We will see things like this happen. And by the way, we've been in the last days since Jesus came. And the first time, the last days have been ushered 
in when he came. And we need to be ready. Uh, so we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We're going to look at three events uh, of what the Bible calls the blessed hope. And we call this the rapture. The word rapture is not found in Scripture, but it means to be caught up. And that's where we get the term rapture. And it means to be caught up. It's known as the blessed hope. And here's, here's a passage out of Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Read this with me. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled and upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. That's Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14. I want to give you several things of why I believe that we're going to have a pre-tribulation rapture. I believe that Jesus is going to come before the tribulation. And here's why. I want to give you four evidences from God's word. The first one is found in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Listen to what this verse says. It says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. The Greek word for out of is ek. And it means literally out of. I will keep you out of that hour. It means to keep you from. The Lord's intention is to keep the church out of the tribulation. Therefore, the, the rapture must occur before the tribulation begins. And then look at the word hour. This is the word hora in Greek. Greek. This is an hour, literally or figuratively. A day, an instant, a season. A specific time period. The next evidence is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. And this one says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Friends, I want to tell you that the resurrection of Christ is so important because if Jesus did not rise from the dead, we would have no hope. There is hope in the resurrected Lord. And this is the point of 1 Thessalonians 1.10. We wait for the Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead. He rescues us from the coming wrath. You see, the tribulation is really the wrath of God. Right now, the Holy Spirit is here with the church. The Holy Spirit dwells in the church, the people of God. The Holy Spirit's residency is within the church. And the Holy Spirit is called the great restrainer. He's keeping the evil at bay. But when, when, the whole, when Jesus comes, the church is going to go with Jesus and the Holy Spirit goes with. That's why it says in Revelation, the Spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. The third evidence is found in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. It says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are not appointed to wrath. In fact, that's why Jesus came. He died on the cross, so that we would not have to face his wrath. What causes the wrath of God? Sin does. And see, God sent Jesus to pay the penalty of sin. And when you and I accept Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us, there's, a, there's this transformation that takes place. If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. We are set free from our old way. We are forgiven. And friends, this is the point of God's word, that there's a coming wrath that's going to be uh, poured out because a why. Because why? People have ignored the call to come to Jesus. Many people will go through many times of hearing an invitation to the gospel, but they will say, oh, I won't, uh, I won't accept Jesus now. I, I want to live my life and this and that. I remember I worked with a, a man who um, I asked was saved. He told me that his grandfather was a pastor and I said, hey, do you know the Lord? And he goes, 
you know what, I haven't asked Jesus in my heart. I just want to live my life. That is a scary walk. When you know the truth, but you don't walk in it. That's a scary thing. Because you know not the hour at which Jesus will return. Or we don't know at what time the well of our days will run dry. The fourth and final thing is this one in the scriptural evidence for pre-trib rapture. The church is absent from Revelation chapter 4 to 18. Revelation chapters 4 to 18 deal with the events of the tribulation. And the church is mentioned 17 times in the first three chapters of Revelation, but after chapter 4, it's not mentioned because we're with Jesus. Let's look at three events surrounding the return of Jesus. And we're going to use 1 Thess- Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18 to talk about this. The first one is this. Point number one is the return of Jesus, the return of Christ. Verse 16 First part of 16, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. So here's what we have. It's going to be a trumpet sound. There will be a literal trumpet blast. When you look at scripture, trumpets were evident in the Old Testament. They were used as signals. The Israeli army used this as a signal to indicate the moves or whatever it was. Friends, this is a signal to tell the people of God that Jesus is coming with the trumpet call of God, with the voice of the archangel. This is a fascinating thing to consider. You and I may be just going about in our day and then all of a sudden we hear the voice of the archangel archangel that says, Behold, Jesus is, is here. The trumpet will sound. Did you know that Jesus foretold of his coming? In Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. Let's look at this. It says, But as for that day and hour, no one knows it, not even the angels in heaven except the Father alone. For just like the days of Noah were, so the coming of the Son of Man will be. For in those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and took them all away. It will be the same at the coming of the Son of Man. Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will will be left. There will be two women grinding grain with, with a mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay alert because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time the thief was coming, he would have been alert and and not let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. What Jesus is telling us here is that nobody can, can predict the hour that Jesus is coming back. Nobody knows at what time Jesus will return. It is, we cannot predict that. We can see the seasons. We can see, like, as the Bible calls it, the birth pains. And birth pains happen before the birth of a child. And in this case, birth pains of things happening in this world, from earthquakes to pandemics to different things that are, that are supernatural going on. Friends, we want to be ready for Jesus because we don't know the hour of his return. The next thing, the return of Jesus will occur quickly. It will happen suddenly. So fast that uh, it's like in the blinking of an eye. We will be changed, the Bible tells us. But his, his return will happen quickly. The next thing, the return of Christ will, will be for those who have received him, the church. Those who have received uh, forgiveness of their sins. Those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This is why it is so important that if you hear the gospel message that you receive Christ, that you don't reject Him, that you receive Him. I I just heard a story of a former pastor who got a phone call from a so-called IRS agent. And uh, this pastor knew that the IRS doesn't make phone calls, but the IRS, by way of mail, uh, sends communications. And this former pastor is listening to this man 
and he's told that he owes money to the IRS and, and that he needs to pay up and he can pay up now. The pastor was patient and he listened, but then he said this. He said, I want to tell you about the greatest moment in my life. I want to tell you about the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And he proceeded to tell this man about Jesus. And the man kind of blew him off. And he, he said, got back to his business of you owe this and this and that. And the pastor said, if Jesus were to return today, would you go with him? Or if you were to die today, would God let you into heaven? What would you say? And the man was quiet. And the pastor asked him again, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? If you were to die, knowing what you know about Jesus, if you were to die, would you go to heaven? And this man was quiet. And the Holy Spirit must have convicted him because he said, I need Jesus. And what began as a scam huh, ended with a new name written in heaven because this man accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. Friends, this tells us that we need to tell many about Jesus because there are so many that don't know. The fourth thing here is that Jesus says to stay alert because you don't know at what day or hour Jesus will come. Remember that Jesus likens his return to a thief in the night. This, the idea is that a thief will not come announced. He will come unannounced. He doesn't announce his coming on a calendar. He just shows up. Angels also confirm the message of Christ's return. As the disciples watched Jesus return up into heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 11 says, Men of Galilee, this Jesus who you see leaving, he will return in the same way that you see him leave. You know, the early church lived in expectancy of Christ's return. You know, they lived in that expectancy that today could be the day in their day. It could happen in our time. Or we could all just live our lives and go to be with the Lord and it could happen in the future. But they lived expecting the return of Christ. Paul spoke of this quite often. This is the theme of both First and Second Thessalonians. He talked about it. And then he talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We today must expect the return of Jesus. And as 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead. You see, this is part of the reason that God raised Jesus, as we talked about earlier, is that Jesus is coming back. He promised that he would. And with that promise comes an incredible sense of joy for his people. Number two this morning, part two of the rapture here, is the raising of the dead saints. This is seen in the latter half of verse 16. And the dead in Christ will rise first. You see, the souls of those who have died in Christ are in heaven. They're, as Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They leave their bodies and go to be with Jesus. Everyone who has accepted Christ is with the Lord right now. There, and we have this term sleep, and it's not talking about soul sleep. It's talking about the condition of the body sleeping in the ground. It is, it is, it is dead. But their souls have left. Friends, we need to be confident that when to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.8, Paul talks about that. So those folks are with Jesus. In fact, when I do a graveside service, I read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, the very verses that we just read. And because in that verse, there's an there's, there's a analogy right there. The casket is, is there preparing to go down into the, the grave. But someday, that dead, the dead in Christ will rise. The flesh, the body, cannot inherit eternal life. In its present state, it needs to be changed. The word sleep is referring to death here. But the soul is living. The soul is very much alive. And so each one is awaiting resurrection. Jesus has the title of firstborn of the dead. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. It says, and he is the head of the body, 
the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have supremacy. So Jesus has this glorified body that someday we all will have. Can you imagine that? No more arthritis. No more uh, nearsightedness or cataracts or pain or any of those struggles. Jesus has this resurrected body and someday we will have a body just like Jesus. What was, what was his body like? Well, he appeared for 40 days after his, his resurrection from the dead, 40 days before he was taken into heaven. In that time, this is what Jesus did. He showed up and he instructed with them. He ate with them. He appeared instantly and disappeared just as quickly as he appeared. Friends, we're going to have a body just like Jesus that won't be subject to sin anymore. You know why there's sickness? You know why there's death? It's because of sin. It's because of sin. And Jesus has called us to accept what he did for us on the cross. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You see, someday everything will be made new. Someday everything will be made right. The third and final thing today, the rapture of the living saints, verse 17. It says, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We will meet the Lord in the air. The Greek word describing this is, is something of a plucking, a, a forceful, woof, taken up. And as we're taken up into the air, it will be so sudden that the Bible calls it a twinkling of the eye. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised first. And the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable. And this mortal must put on immortality. We will be changed. You know how quick it's going to happen? In the twinkling of an eye. How fast can you blink your eye? That's how quickly we will be changed. And it will happen instantly as we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so here's the bottom line. What this means is that those who have died, their bodies are in the ground, their souls are with the Lord. Jesus is going to bring back those who have died with, in him and their, their soul is going to be with their body and their bodies are going to be changed. You're saying, Pastor Pete, this sounds just impossible. It sounds really far-fetched. Friends, this is what the Bible says, that we will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye and all means those who have received Christ. And it says those who are alive until the coming of the Lord will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. We might be going about our daily business and all of a sudden Jesus comes back and we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Friends, can you imagine what's going to happen when this happens? What's going to happen on this earth when Jesus comes back and takes his church, his bride, to be with him? There's going to be chaos that unfolds. Chaos all over the place. Imagine a, a, a pilot piloting a plane who has trusted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Jesus comes and takes him. And that plane is pilotless. You talk about truck drivers who know Jesus who are piloting a truck and all of a sudden they are taken. Friends, there will be a lot of chaos and the world will not know how to explain this. The world will be in chaos when Jesus comes back. And friends, you and I are, will be going to meet with Jesus in the air. And therefore, we need to encourage one another with this. We are going to be changed. All the old stuff is going to go away. The new is coming. Friends, I want you to be encouraged today. You must know that Jesus is who He said He is. That He, he promised that He would return. And he has invited us to be a part of his promise. If you grew up in a church that didn't preach about the return of Jesus, maybe your church ignored it. Maybe your pastor didn't know how to tell others about it because maybe he thought that, well, they won't understand me. Friends, it takes the Holy Spirit for anyone to come to Jesus. And if you feel the Holy Spirit 
coming upon you right now to trust Jesus, to trust what God did for you, you need to turn your life over to Jesus right now. You need to confess your sin and say, Lord, I want the salvation that you have for me. Today is the day of salvation. Friends, he could come back any moment. Be ready. And friends, as we are going through this time, this is a reminder to us to always be ready for the return of Jesus. If Jesus' return happens today, what a marvelous thing. But it could be 40 years from now. It could be 40 days from now. It could be 400 years. We don't know the day or the hour. We are told in the Word just to be ready. Would you, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know Jesus, and you're like, well, I, want, I don't want to go through that tribulation. I don't want to go through that. Well, friends, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our access to the Father. He is our access to eternal life. And all we need to do is to trust Him. We receive what He did for us on that cross. You see, it was His life for ours. It was His blood that He shed as a remission for our sin. I'll pray with you. You can ask the Lord in your heart by saying this prayer. Join me. Dear Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart. Please forgive me for my sin. I believe that you died on that cross for me, that you shed your blood as a payment for my sin. And I thank you for doing that. And I ask that you would forgive me for my sin. I confess it and I repent of it. I turn from it. And Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he came and died for me. And I believe that my name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I await the return of Jesus. Help me to stay uh, uh, alert. Help me to tell others about Jesus. And I thank you for this gift of salvation that's only through Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you receive Jesus as Lord, please let us know. Let us know. We would love to hear from you. At the end of this message today, there's information about Amazing Grace and how you can contact us. And if you like our videos, please put like. If you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. Well, friends, God bless you. And uh, if Jesus doesn't come right this week, we'll see you next week. But we await. We await for the blessed hope of the church. God bless you. Have a great day. See you next time.